Welcome to the war zone. I hope you've got the tape one, the flexibility tape finished, and I hope you have the second tape done with the kicking techniques. They're very important because we're going to put those to great use in this third tape, the sparring tape. But before we get right into the sparring and the techniques utilized, I want to go over some of the equipment that's used. Number one, the hand gear. It's called safety equipment, the hands and foot gear. The hands are open so I can grab. I can also make a fist so I can throw the back fist, the ridge hand so the inside is protected, and also the reverse punch. The foot gear. The top of the foot is all that's covered. The heel is covered to protect the heel against if I strike his head, also used to protect his head against bone to bone contact. Some of the points to think about. These are point tournaments we're going to be working with, not full contact. Okay, so the control technique, the equipment is entirely different for full contact. Okay, so think about that. These are control techniques. So when you're working with your opponent, even when you're practicing, control it. Don't really snap it and reel it through there, okay? Let's go over some of the points that are involved in point tournaments. Okay, Rob, take your stance. First of all, the hand techniques. Probably the simplest and the easiest hand technique to use is a back fist. From here, I step in, back fist here, back and down. Out and back. Out and back. Snappy, make sure it's snapped. Let the elbow work for you, okay? A reverse punch, either to the body or to the face. To the face, it has to be controlled now. Here, out and back. To the body, you can make light contact. Here, here, and back. The ridge hand strike, stepping in, here. Designed to use primarily against the head. Here, again, the inside is protected. Here, so if it comes in, if Rod comes into me, here, I can counter with the ridge hand. Punches to the kidneys underneath, or hooking type punches to the kidneys. The techniques are to the facial area, the entire head, the stomach area, and chest area, rib area, sometimes the kidneys are allowed. Usually no spine. It's covered too well, and if you do hit it nice and hard, you can cause damage. Sometimes the groin area is a target, sometimes the groin area is not. Usually the belt is the cutting line, okay? Joint techniques are not allowed. Sweeping techniques are allowed in a lot of tournaments, okay? Let's go through the kicking techniques now. Kicking techniques designed to use to the same parts of the body. If I throw the kick to the head, control. Remember now, it has to be controlled because there's no padding on the bottom part of my foot. Okay, from here, I can slap this away. Kicking here. Kicking to the rib area. Chest or stomach area. The technique has to be controlled with delivering the technique, demonstrating power and speed. Three of the most important aspects of sparring are timing, distancing, and footwork. What I'd like to do with Rob, first of all, is demonstrate a little of this to you. The timing, the distancing, and the footwork. Timing number one. I want to set my techniques up to where I get him to react. I just don't want to rely on one good shot to get in there. I want to fake him. I want to work my combinations, what we've worked on in tape two, right? So what I want to be able to do is have the timing to when, let's say I slide up this way and start to fake this way, he reacts to that fake. Or I fake this way, he reacts, and then I can counter that move or come in with, with other techniques. Distancing. I want to be close enough, but not too close. I don't want to be here if I'm going to kick, because then I have to lean back to throw the kick. I also don't want to be here. I can't reach him. I can, <clears throat> no matter how loose I am, I can't reach him. Then I fall down. I want to be right about here, so when I kick, I can reach that thing out there and get him with it. Footwork is very important. I want to be able to be able to bridge this distance. Boom, now I'm close enough I can strike, boom, boom. But I want to have close enough, I want to have that movement, I want to be able to bridge that gap, 
Get in and get out. Using the feet. The three things we talked about in the second tape. The big step, the little step, and the hardly any step. Same thing happens with the hands. Here, or here, or here. Get that movement down. Be able to have it come second nature to you. We'll add one more little aspect, creating those openings. How often have you sparred or been working with an opponent? Rob takes his stance and I say, I want to get him with the back fist. And I throw the back fist and he blocks it. And I go, uh-oh, what do I do now? Think about that. Have something coming after every technique that you throw. If I throw this back fist at Rob here, and I'm saying, now it's his turn. Well, I don't want it to be his turn. So I can come up with something else. Here, or come here, or come here, boom, boom, boom. So I can still have something working with me all the time. Have your body in such a position, using the footwork, working with the timing and the distancing, to where I'm here, then I'm here, then I may be here, then I may be back here. See how Rob has to move? That's also messing up his concentration, messing up his balance. So I can be here and fake here, boom, 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 and get it in and get it out. In and out. Being able to work that movement. Are you ready? Get your foot gear, your hand gear on. Let's get with it. Probably the easiest and most simplest to score with in point tournaments is the back fist. If I'm working with Rob here, all I do is with my forward leg now, remember the kicking that we did in the second tape where I stepped, slid up, and threw the kicking technique? Well, we do the same thing with the back fist except we don't slide the rear leg up. All I do is reach forward and back fist. So I throw a fast from here, from here. I can fake here, get him to move up, and then maybe come over. But basically, the back fist is a speed movement. I'm here, boom and back. Here, boom, and back. Okay, now, I don't want to create an opening on myself. Remember what we were talking about earlier? So I don't want to throw the back fist, have him block it, and leave me open. I want to come back with another technique. I happen to like the side kick. So from, if I'm here, I throw the back fist at Rob. If I move the forward leg, boom. Now, see how his elbow's up? As long as I leave this hand here, He's going to keep that arm there to keep me from throwing the back fist. So I come here, it's back fist here. See where the elbow still is? Now, I'm close enough to throw the side kick. He doesn't see the leg come up and the side kick. And down. One more time. It's from here, back fist, side kick. See how the knee comes up now? Very simply, one, two. Once more. One, two. A little quicker now. One, boom, and down. Once more, boom, and a side kick. Now, what happens if your opponent throws that side kick to you? He can do the same thing you can do. So if he throws a back fist at me, I don't want to stick my hand up because he can kick me here. What I want to do is lean my body back, using that leaning, using body positioning. So when Rob throws the back fist, I lean out now, just the back fist, Rob. I lean out of the way, and defensive side kick, and down. Now throw it real hard, and down. So all I do is I stick it out, let Rob run into it. We're here, here, and down. All I do is lean back, knee up, side kick out, and then down. Okay, let's try that. Have your partner throw the back fist, lean out of the way. See the distance I have now? The knee comes up, side kick, and down. Okay, keep your chin in, protect yourself. Okay, one more time. He back fist here, side kick, and then in. A variation of this counter now to his back fist would be a hook kick. Okay, Rob takes his stance. Again, he throws the back fist to my face. Now I want to get out of the way. I don't want to take a chance of blocking it and creating another opening on myself. So what I'll do is I'll keep my forward hands down, this hand up to protect myself, and then work my counter with my legs. Okay, Rob, throw it again. Here, and back. One more time. I'm out of the way. 
A lot of times that hand might be there to be able to, to defend against the sidekick. I don't want to take a chance to have him maybe jam the sidekick and get on top of me. So what I do is he'll lean into it now. As I lean back, see how the opening is created now in his face? I lean, boom, and down. Very simply, he throws it, and the hook kick, and down. One more time. Here, boom, and down. Okay? Try that. Main thing to do is get that knee up. If it's down low and he comes in, here, you're going to jam yourself, and he'll be on top of you. Get the knee up. Here, boom, and down. Okay? Try it one time. We've had the back fist into the side kick. Now we're going to have the side kick into the back fist, except we're not going to throw the side kick. What happens now, I'm working with Rob, right? So I'm going to slide in here. Now watch what happens when I bring my knee up to kick. He has to react to it. He has to react to it. So what I do, I just simply step down and back fist. One more time. I slide up, knee up just like I'm going to kick. Step down and back fist. As I step down, the back fist comes out. From here, here, boom. Again, here, boom, and out. Now, to elaborate further on that combination, remember, back fist into the side kick, then we have a fake side kick into a back fist. Well, let's work on that fake side kick into the back fist. If I slide in here, from here, and I bring my knee up, and I slide in afterwards for the back fist, he reacts to it by defending, let's say. Very simply, now, all I have to do is lean back with the knee up and kick, and then down, okay? So it's from here, slide up, Knee up for the side kick. Step down, back fist, lean back. Body leaning now, body positioning. Knee up and kick and then down. A little quicker from here, back, boom, boom, and back. One more time. Nice hair. I wish I had some. <laughs> Slide up, back fist, and kick and down. Now what we're going to work on is the roundhouse kick. In the side kick, we work the forward leg and the forward hand. Side kick, back fist, back fist, side kick, and roundhouse kick. Now what we're going to do is work the forward leg into a roundhouse kick with the rear hand coming underneath for a reverse punch. Sliding here, remember, covering this distance. Make sure he can't get to you without him moving, but you want to be able to bridge that gap, bridge that distance. I slide up, bring the knee up, kick. If he blocks it, that's okay. Then I'd step deep into him here, blocking this arm here, coming underneath for an uppercut type punch to the rib area. So it's from here, slide up, kick, punch underneath. Once more, slide up, knee up, protect yourself with the leg, kick. Step back, punch underneath, and back. A little quicker, here, boom, and back. One more time, kick, and back, from here. Now try this one. This was a little sneakier. This is where your sneakiness comes through with your combinations. Rob takes his stance. I slide in, kick stomach level with the roundhouse kick here, right? I pull back, I step underneath and punch. Now what's Rob's counter to this? Either with a ridge hand forward or a reverse punch straight in, right? I don't want to stay there for that because it might hurt. It might get him a point. So what I want to do is I'll slide up, kick, come underneath and punch. When he comes back, I lean out of the way, look at his left side of his face, unprotected, and the hook kick comes in. One more time. I slide up, kick, step down, punch, lean back, and hook kick, and down. A little quicker now, ready? Here, boom, here, and back. One more time. Kick, boom, boom, and down. In and out. In and out. Be able to work that distancing. Now comes the importance of tape two. My partner Rob takes his stance. Look at the stance. Now I have to create that opening, remember. Look at his belt. This glove is just a little above that belt. So what I want to do is I want to see what he's going to do when I throw that kick. You just defend whatever way you want. Good, now, but look how far that went, and look there. That's what I want to do now, is I want to create that opening. So it's, it, it, boom, boom, and down, sorry. Okay, love to hit young kids. 
But from here, I slide up, kick, and then butt. Because that hand is busy. It's got to stop that. If he doesn't, I score. I don't throw it hard. I throw it quick and snappy. What I like to do all the time is take your stance. Make him mad. Because if he lets me get this close, take your fighting stance. If he lets me get this close, I can get this kick in. Maybe not right there, because his hand is right there. But I can get it in either there, 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 someplace around here, and upset his balance, and upset his thinking. So what happens, Rob takes his stance. And I throw the kick. See, now he's thinking. Now he's thinking, whoa! Now I get him thinking, boom, boom, and I get it in. So I make him think low. I make him think low. What's the opposite of that? We worked on it in the second tape, remember? Roundhouse kick into the hook kick. Watch what he does with a double roundhouse kick. Boom, boom. Look at this hand, but look at the head. So now we're going to create that opening. Boom, wham. Right there it is. Creating that opening here. Boom, boom. Wham. So I get him all the way around. I can go boom, boom, boom. So I use this as a little fulcrum or a little pivoting stick. Double roundhouse kick. Boom, boom. He blocks it. So I come in and go boom, wham, and down. If Rob turns the other way, now he's taking away my stomach. But what I can do now is very simply just sweep. From here, touch and kick. Touch and kick. If he sticks his hand up, what can I do? Touch and hook kick. Touch and hook kick. So everything works together. Not really knocking him off balance. Not knocking him off balance. Just making him realize. Watch his hands. That's all I want. Just boom, wham. And in. Another one, boom, wham, and in. Okay? Be able to just to make him concentrate on what's not coming. Okay, now, thinking a counter. I want to use my leg to counter Rob. Rob is a good, strong fighter. Let's say Rob comes in and sweeps me. If my weight's in the middle and he sweeps it nice and hard, you know, I lose my balance. He can get me. So what I want to do when Rob comes in, I lean back and take the weight off my supporting leg, off my forward leg. Then, let's say he comes in with his combination. And in. One more time. Rob. And down. What I do is wrap around that because he does the work for me. He comes in and sweeps. There it is. He does that work for me. Does it again. And in. I can also come under it. He sweeps. Side kick. Again, sweep it hard. Boom. Again, tape one, the flexibility. He sweeps. See where the knee is? Bam. And in. Be able to have that pulling back of the leg. He sweeps. Boom. And in. Or the hook. And in. OK? Get that flexibility. Get that leaning. Keep your balance. What happens if you can't get your leg up to hook kick or you're having trouble getting the leg up to defensive side kick? Very simple, you use a back fist. You take away the sweep from him. Rob's gonna slide up the sweep. That's all I do, but I don't lean back. I lean into it. Now watch what happens with my forward hand. See what happens? Again. Now you come in with your combination afterwards. I beat him because he's halfway between. He comes in to sweep. If I'm there, he's going to sweep it. But I'm here, and then bam. OK, coming nice and hard. I beat him. The leg is not even out yet, and I sweep. Watch again. Watch the forward leg. Watch the rear leg. Here. I beat him. He comes in to sweep. Here. You can jump. I don't like to jump because I don't want to be up in the air. That means if I go up, i got to come down. And I don't know where I'm going to come down. So he comes in to sweep. Here. OK? Main thing to remember, knee up. Not this, because then he's going to jam you, throw you off balance. But get that leg over his, here, and then counter. Good snappy back fist, lean into it. He comes in, here. I'm jamming him now. He's not trying to sweep me. I'm jamming him. We're going to work on a couple jamming techniques now. 
What I mean by jamming is Rob's going to come in to kick. Rather than blocking the technique, I short circuit that movement, which means I bring a leg up or an elbow down or something that stops that technique short of actually making contact with anything. Therefore, he becomes off balance and susceptible to my counter. What happens now, let's do it slowly. Rob, Rob slides in, he slides the kick. Now, what happens as he slides in the kick, I lean back, raise my knee to jam. He kicks, and then I fall forward with a ridge hand to his face. Or I can throw a hook punch or a reverse punch or whatever. I prefer the ridge hand. Why I, why I like this is because I don't want to turn towards my opponent. It leaves too much of a target open. I want to be here, so, but I'm a kicker, so you know what's coming after that, which we'll do in a minute. Okay, Rob, all one movement, you slide in the kick. Boom, ridge hand. Now you notice how I'm coming into him. I'm not doing this, because if it does this, it throws me off balance. Rob throws the kick, here, boom, and ridge hand. Okay, the counter to that again, he slides in and kicks here. Now you notice how I lean back? I can't do anything. He can get me now, so I have to throw him off balance. Here, and ridge hand. Another movement is a counter hook kick. Rob slides in the kick, I jam here, step down now, see where he is? And the hook kick. Why, the reason I like to step down is, it helps me get the snap, the snap, the pivoting in the hook kick. So he comes in the kicks, hit, here, and down. I can also do the roundhouse kick. He slides up the kick, jam here, and then just up. The roundhouse kick, I try not to put my foot down because it's a quick, snappy movement. The hook kick is a lot of power. One more time. The roundhouse kick, jam, here, and in. Sorry. He comes in a kick, here, boom, and in. The hook kick, slides in, jam, here, and down. Now, I'm going to create a good opening. My partner, Rob, has a good forward stance. Hands are up, good positioning, good balance, right? So I want to think that I'm going to create this opening real good. Well, I've got to do it because he's got a nice, solid stance. So I've got to create this opening. I want to kick him in the face. I don't care kicking him in the stomach, kicking in the ribs. Anybody can kick anybody in the ribs or in the stomach, right? I want to kick him in the head because it makes me feel good. So what I want to do is I want to create that opening. Watch his head, watch this hand. We have not rehearsed this, so watch what happens. See the head, the foot comes here, the head goes that way. Very simply, out of range of the hook kick, but in range for the roundhouse kick. So basically what happens now is I'm gonna do this. Here, and boom. I slide up, there's the leg. He sees it, he's gonna defend against it. I fold back, and the kick, and in. One more time, a little quicker, fake, and in. Now, how do I do that? What I might want to do is I might want to throw the roundhouse kick, slide up here, step down as he comes in the counter now, the hook kick. So I can do this, I'll throw the roundhouse kick, let's say. He blocks, tries to counter. Right there. Slide up, knee comes up, kick. Step down. See, I'm still leaning back. He can't reach me, but I can reach him. There's the movement. So it's from here, boom, and the hook kick, and down. Another one. His guard is there. I'm here. I throw the kick, he blocks it. Fake the hook kick. Same thing. Slide up. I'm going to throw the low hook kick, but now the hook kick comes through the face. Again, slowly. Watch what happens. I slide up, bring the knee up, I throw the roundhouse kick. He blocks it, comes in to throw the punch with the rear hand, I lean, and the hook kick. Very simply, one more time. Slide up, kick, and the hook kick, and down. Sometimes a fighter will grab you to try to get you off balance, to try to get you upset enough that he can counter you. So he grabs here, boom, and tries to counter punch. If I'm just standing here, let's say Rod grabs and punches. Okay, do it again, all one move. Boom, okay, now I'm off balance. I can't punch here, I can't back fist. What can I do? Flexibility is important. The kicking technique is, ability, is important. He comes and kicks, boom. As I, as I see him reach out, boom. Now, see how I've shifted my hips back? The arm is here, he's got that punch ready to go. If I bring this out like this, he can score on me. 
I don't want this to happen. I keep the elbow in tight. Now if he pulls, he's going to hit the arm. And I still protect it. Notice how the hips are back? He's pulling me right into him. Boom, right there. Again, he comes in and grabs. And I can counter. I might pull my shirt off a little bit, but I'll get him. He comes in and in. If you don't have that flexibility yet to kick to the head, use a simple side kick or maybe a short little hook kick to the rib area. Again, Rob comes in, here, boom. You have to get him as he's coming in. He can't be able to grab and then right there punch because he's got me pulled towards him. It's hard to pull this leg up and kick when I'm off balance. So as Rob comes, grabs and punches here. See how I've leaned back already? He has trouble reaching me with the reverse punch because of my waist to the rear. And now the kick and in. Very simple, all the one real quick. Boom, and out once more. And in. The knee comes up, out, back, and then down. Got it? Okay. What happens when your opponent throws a kick to your head? Rob takes his stance. Let's say he's going to slide up and throw a roundhouse kick to the back of my head. Slides up and he kicks. Boom. Okay, now what I don't want to do is I don't want to create an opening on myself. How would you expect I would create that opening? By simply blocking. He throws the kick, I block. Look at this. He can score. He can counter my counter to his counter. So what happens, I simply lean back, distancing. He slides up for the kick. See how I'm taking that away? I don't need my hands, but I'm going to keep here for protection. Now what I use is a very simple counter hook kick. He slides in and kicks. Boom, and in. I get him to walk into the technique. One more time, Rob. He slides in and kick. Here, boom, and down. Very simply, he slides in to kick. Now I turn back here, and he walks in. Okay? If you can't get the kick to the head, again, use a hooking kick to the stomach or chest area. He slides in for the same kick here, boom, and in. Lean over, lean over. It's not important that you have your body upright when you kick. That's a fallacy. What you want are your hips underneath you. Straight here. Not here, but here. So you have that balance. So you have that balance. The upper body can lean back as long as your hips are above your leg. He slides in for that kick. And there's the kick. OK? Another one he can do, let's say he throws a side kick. Here, see how I'm leaning? Now, what can happen, he'll throw the kick, I lean back, he steps down, and the roundhouse kick. He does that all in one motion. Distancing is important here also. He slides in for the kick, out of the way, boom, and down. Once more. Here, and there's the kick. Once more. I can hook kick with it. Here, here, and in. Or I can back fist punch. Here, boom. Here, distancing. I'm in range, I'm out of range, I'm in range. What happens if your opponent is right on top of you? Rob has his hands up. I don't want to mix it up with him in here. Let's say he's bigger than I am, he's stronger than I am. I can maybe get a technique in, but he's going to be stronger than I am. He's going to be maybe a little quicker than I am. So I want distancing on my side. So get real close, Rob. There you go, right here. Now, right from here, all I have to do, again, working flexibility, working the techniques we worked before, is a very simple hook kick. What does he least expect me to do from this position? Kick. Because I'm here, we're, we're tussing around, all of a sudden, boom, and I'm gone. Again, we're here, getting close, getting close. Just hit me. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, get over here. Even the great ones make mistakes. He's in close, getting closer, getting closer. See here, he, he, boom, and there it is. Very simply, the knees up, getting close here, nice and close here, here, and the knees up here, kick and down. So I have that distancing on my side. So I have something between him and I, the leg. Can also be working combinations. I can be here. Now watch the positioning of the inside leg. 
If I'm here, he's got me, he can sweep me. Boom, and I'm off balance. But the good part about this, I can simply hook kick from here. I can straighten this out here and hook kick. If it's on the inside of his leg from here, now I can be here, turn him a little bit, lean back, and roundhouse kick. Or I can punch, boom, 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 hook kick from the outside. Okay? Think about it. Anything is possible. There's primarily three types of fighters you will spar in the ring. Number one, the aggressive fighter. Number two, the runner. And number three, the counter fighter. Rob, take your stance. Now, on the aggressive fighter, he keeps his attack relentless towards you. He's all the time attacking. So if Rob does attack me, it's all the time moving. So I can't decide to do anything. So I've got to, gee, when he creepies, oh. Well, I've got to stop that technique before it gets started. I can't back up twice and say, now I'm going to counter, because he's already got his momentum moving. So I've got to stop him right off the bat. Here. As soon as he moves. Here. As soon as he moves. Here. As soon as he moves. Or as soon as he moves. I can't back up. If I back up, he's got me. The second type of fighter, the runner. Let's say we're sparring. And I'm working at Rob. As soon as I start to move, he takes off. And I said, what can I do? I can't throw a technique. I'm going to miss him a mile. So how do I stop him from backing up? Very simply, I can either inch my way in here and just whip it up, or leg check here. Now he can't go anywhere. Just for a second, he's off balance. Now I can counter. The third type of fighter is the counter fighter. He perhaps is probably the most dangerous because he's letting you make a mistake. If I'm working with Rob, he's waiting for me just to start a movement. He doesn't care what it is, where it's coming from, how I move it. He's just letting me move forward. When I start to move forward, boom, there's the counter. If I slide up for a kick, he's letting just for me to move. Here, boom, and he's coming in. So what I want to be able to do is fake him out. Cover that distance, but not cover that distance. So if I'm here with, with Rob, I want to be here, fake here. See how he's got it, whoa, what's that? Because it's already here, he can't punch me. Stick the punch out. It's too far away. So I can be here, but I can also reach him now. But I can also reach him. So what I want to do is from your fake, boom, and get the technique in. to work a very good teaching drill right now. The drill is very simply, Rob is going to be the aggressor, I'm going to be the defender. Now Rob is only going to go about half speed, three quarter speed, but he's going to throw all of his techniques that he works. Kicking techniques, hand techniques, spinning techniques, sweeping techniques, and so forth. All I'm going to do is defend. Working my timing, working my distancing, I'm not going to counter him, I'm not going to hit him with anything, all I'm going to do is defend. Okay, kind of watch. Then the secondly, I'll be the aggressor and Rob will be the defender. It's just very simple exercise. When he's throwing techniques, I actually see them coming. Rather than go and hoping it goes away, it won't. So I watch the techniques. I'd be able to prepare myself for the techniques to be able to block, to counter, to evade. Okay? Okay, Rob. Okay, about half speed, three quarter speed. Okay, now, see how Rob throws his techniques? It's good for him because he doesn't have to worry about me hitting him back. So he can say, I wonder if this works. It's good for me because I know he's not going to try to take my face off. He's going to throw the techniques, control them. That half speed, three quarter speed. You notice when I'm working, I'm not just going here, turning my head. My head is on my opponent. 
When he throws some techniques, I'm here watching. I'm letting my arms protect, not trying to commit myself. Blocking out here real wide. Everything's nice and close. Let the arms work for you. Let the legs work for you. Okay, now I'll be aggressive towards Rob. He'll defend. I'll just work my aggressive. Understand? If he keeps turning into me as a combination fighter, he's going to walk into something. So as I throw the back fist and he blocks with his outside hand here, look at the chest. Boom. And that's what happened. Bye bye, Rob. Think about it. One of the best drills that we're going to work right now is this one involving three people. My two partners and myself. What's going to happen now, I'm going to throw techniques at both my opponents. One at one partner, then one at the other. So number one, I can practice agility within my movement. Number two, I can practice balance within my movement. And number three, I can practice the particular techniques. The techniques are the same. All I do is have to shift my weight, shift my balance, be able to shift the movement towards my opponent. We'll start off very simply with an easy one. Okay, we'll go a little more difficult, a little more difficult, and as we get more difficult, we'll throw doubles and triple kicking techniques. So you can work on your balance, work on the technique, work on your stamina, balance, and speed. Okay? Let's do number one first, a real simple one. Let me demonstrate it to you, show you the, the basic movements involved, and then we'll do it together. First of all, I'll face sideways to my opponent because I want to fight from this side. All they are right now are my targets. They're not going to block, they won't counter, they won't even put their hands up. They're just kind of there. One thing that is good for them to do, though, is watch the technique coming so they can see how to avoid it or how to counter it or how to block it. Number one, slide up, your knee comes up, side kick, low to the stomach. Step towards my opponent now because I have to cover that distance. Front kick to the stomach level, step in reverse punch face level. Look over my shoulder at my other opponent, step back fist to the face level, and reverse punch to the body, step back, and I'm ready to go again. Let's do it one more time slowly. Slide up, knee up, side kick. Step towards my opponent here, front kick, step forward, punch. Look at my opponent, back fist, and punch low, and back to the original position. Now let's do it about half speed, three quarter speed, okay? With me. And back to your original starting position. On the second kicking drill, working with your partners again, we're going to work spinning and darting movements along with the punching techniques. Number two, throw a hook kick to my opponent to my left, step down, then do a turning spinning back kick to my opponent to my right. Reverse punch, then spin opposite way, back fist, reverse punch. With me slowly. Slide up, your knee up, the hook kick out, comes through, step down. Spin around his way, turning your back to your opponent, turning your head all the way around, back kick. Step punching, now not looking back this way now, but looking over your left shoulder, stepping and spinning, back fist, Punching low again, and then stepping back, ready to go. Again, one more time. Slide up, your knee up, side kick out, then hook it through level, step down. Spin around all the way this time, back kick, punching, face level, step through, back fist, and punch. And back to the original position. Now let's work at about half speed, three-quarter speed. 
Watch your balance, watch your technique, snap the movements. Don't thrust them, but snap them with me, okay? And back. On this next three-man drill, we're going to work combination kicks. First movement, to my opponent to my left, I throw a high side kick. Bring it down, again stepping towards my opponent now because I have to work with both of them. I'll throw a front kick low and then pull back because I'm going to be very close to my opponent and then a spinning back kick to my opponent's stomach. Reverse punch, either stomach or face level. Pivoting around to my rear now, pulling the elbow back to me. Reverse punch to my opponent's chest and then roundhouse kick to his face. I'll explain it as I do it, okay? With me now, slowly. From here, slide up, knee up, nice and high, watch your balance now. Stick the leg up, good. Face towards your opponent. Front kick, pull back. Look around here, back kick. Step in, punch. Look over your shoulder to your opponent, punch here. Now, see how close I am to my opponent? I want to be able to throw my front roundhouse kick from here. So I bring the knee up nice and high and kick. Back, step out of the way. Okay? One more time slowly. Watch the movement. Watch the hip and the shoulder movement and the leg movement. Slide up, your knee up high, side kick. Step towards my opponent, front kick, step back, back kick. Punch, and punch. In close now, roundhouse kick. Pivot, knee up, kick, back, step out, and down. Okay, now let's work this one a little bit quicker. About half speed, three quarter speed. Remember again, snap the techniques out and back. Don't leave it out there. Your opponent can break it off and beat you over the head with it. From here, On this drill, we're going to need a little bit of balance. Working with my opponent to my left this time. Working a roundhouse kick high. If you can't throw it high, again, throw it low. And then while the leg is still up in the air, pivoting around, throwing a side kick to my opponent to the left. Stepping down and punching. Stepping forward, punching with the reverse hand here. And then stepping out, ready to defend yourself. Let's do it slowly. With me now, remember, you go to your opponent to your right first now. Okay, it's a roundhouse kick. Slide up, your knee up, foot's up too. Roundhouse kick out, back. Pivoting it around, the knee's still up now. Side kick out, back, punch. Step forward and punch. Now if you notice my shoulder, it's protecting my jaw, my facial area. My supporting hand that's not being used is protecting the other side. And it's also ready to use in a counter and it's not hanging down here. Protect, keep everything in nice and tight, out and back again. Step out, and I'm ready to go again. Now, working a little quicker. Remember, these are designed to help you with your accuracy and your technique, designed also to target an area. Pick a target, go for that target, not just for a whole big, there's a body, here goes, but pick a particular area and go for that area, whether it be the chest area, the rib area, the stomach, the nose, or the chin. Be able to go for that one area. Okay, now let's do this one a little quicker. About half speed, three quarter speed. Watch your balance now. It's tricky pivoting and throwing the sidekick. About half speed, ready? With me, go. Again, we're going to go with a partner to our right, but we got a hard one for you. First of all, low roundhouse kick, high roundhouse kick. Pivot around to my opponent here, putting the foot down, sliding up, side kick low, into a hook kick high, into a roundhouse kick high, stepping down and punching. Then stepping forward, throwing a reverse hook kick, then a roundhouse kick, stepping down and punching. Okay? Sounds difficult. It is. Very important to have the correct balance. Have that knee nice and high. 
and let the leg come out and work for you. Lean back, keep equilibrium under you. With me slowly. Going to the person to your right first. Slide up, knee and a foot both up, roundhouse low, and roundhouse high. Step down, face the person to your left, slide up, knee up, side kick, slide out, hook kick, and then roundhouse kick. Step down, punch, pivot now, slide up, hook kick, roundhouse kick, step down, punch, step back, ready to go again. How did that feel? How did a balance feel? Let's try to do it a little quicker, okay? About half speed, three quarter speed, watch your balance, watch the kicks themselves. we've covered so far. First of all, flexibility in tape one. You have to be flexible. If you're going to work these combination kicking techniques, if you're going to be able to stick that leg up in the air, you must have flexibility. You have to have that agility within flexibility. Those exercises that we worked in tape one, if you remember, helps you a lot with the agility and the flexibility. Tape two, the kicking techniques. Just the kicking techniques themselves will help you. You don't need a partner. Just the mirror so you can see what you're doing. Work the combinations. Be able to hold that leg up there. Be able to hold the knee up there so you have something between you and your opponent. Now, tape three, the sparring. Everybody's built different, like I said before. They're built differently. They have different psychological makeup. So you're not going to think the same way, I think. Maybe some of the movements will be the same. If they are, fine. I hope you got it. But be able to work with it. Change it to suit your own body style. Be able to work with those techniques. Work with the flexibility. Work with the kicking techniques. Change those kicking techniques if it suits your body better. All I'm giving you is the way Wallace does it. Not the way you'll do it. The way Wallace does it. What you'll do is you'll take those techniques and change them to where they become your own. You keep this work up. Help you with your endurance. Help you with your stamina. Help you with your strength and you too can become a winner. You got it. standing by to bring you a world middleweight championship in full contact karate. As a man who's been a legend in the sport, Bill Superfoot Wallace makes his final appearance. His leg has been timed at 60 miles per hour. His opponent and challenger is Robert Biggs, who's from St. Louis. He has a style that could give Wallace a great deal of difficulty. We're ready to bring you here in Anderson, Indiana, scheduled 12 rounder for the world middleweight championship of the world. PKA, full contact karate and the superstar of our competition, Bill Superfoot Wallace, coming into this arena in Anderson, Indiana. This man is 21 and 0, the defending world champion. Let's watch him in action. Wallace is labeled Superfoot. The reason, a devastating left leg, which has been clocked in excess of 60 miles per hour. But this world middleweight champion has also developed a devastating left hook, as evidenced in this title fight against Pat Worley when he took Worley out in the first round. Robert Biggs has a different style that could give Wallace a lot of trouble. I asked him if he had different training tactics for this fight. Yeah, uh, usually I usually run maybe two, two and a half miles, but I've been running like five miles a day. Uh, been doing between 20, 24 rounds, a lot of kicking, a lot of hand techniques. 
and been eating a lot of hamburgers. I'm really greasing up for this one. <laughs> Bill, this bout has been labeled as your final bout that you are, in fact, going to retire. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm old. I'm almost 35 years old, so uh, I don't heal like I used to. And uh, the, a lot of young kids coming up, being able to hit real hard and, and just as quick as I am. So I want to be remembered as doing something that uh, I was the best at. So uh, they usually have a tendency to remember you for the last thing you did, and I don't want to go out a loser. And here's the challenger, Robert Biggs, 29 years old from St. Louis, Missouri. I asked him what he's going to have to watch out for against Wallace. <laughs> his left leg and his left arm. If we could tie those two together, I'd have it made. <laughs> he kicks at 60 mile an hour, they say. Right, right, it looks like it. What's that feel like? I haven't been hit yet, but I'll let you know later on. <laughs> Our expert analyst for this World Middleweight Championship is Joe Corley, who fought Superfoot Wallace in 1975 for the title bout. Now, very quickly, what are some of the rules that we're going to have to really look at as we start the fight? Well, as you know, both fighters can punch and kick. Each fighter will have to throw eight kicks per round, and they all have to be above the belt. And we might indicate that this foot pad is very instrumental in the fight. That's right. The foot pad weighs about four ounces. It covers the top of the foot, not the bottom of the foot. And so we're going to be back for Bill Superfoot Wallace's final bout. And now let's go to the center of the ring for referee Jay Will and his instructions to the fighters. Corners. When I say break, make sure you step back. I will step between you. Do not resume the fight until I raise my hand and say continue. Shake hands now and we'll come out and put bow. And there is Robert Pig, ranked fifth in the contending ranks of the middleweight division. He's a man who appears very shy, but he's extremely confident. And Bill Wallace, he has been a legendary figure, Joe Corley. The growth of this, this sport, PKA full contact karate, has been closely associated with the popularity of Bill Wallace. Wallace is 34, Biggs is 29. Remember now, scheduled 12 rounder, two minutes in each round. They must have eight kicks per round. That's a minimum kick requirement. If they do not, they lose two points for each kick below that. Each kick below that, and that two points is subtracted from each judge's scorecard. Robert Biggs so far is keeping the hands up. Wary of the right, of the left. Uh, round kick of Bill Wallace. Also, he has to worry about the left hook of Bill Wallace. That means Biggs is going to be trying to keep that right hand up close to his face. Wallace has some good, strong side kicks to the body. Joe, we keep hearing a big style could really give Wallace trouble. Why? Biggs, Robert Biggs is a very aggressive kind of fighter. He starts slow. First two rounds, you can normally see Biggs just really tense. Then he starts to key in. He starts to get very intense, and he really begins pouring in then. Wallace, a man whose leg has been timed at 60 miles per hour, kicks with only one leg as opposed to most fighters. And you saw it then, and again, with the left leg. The left round kick came up, caught Biggs up high on the head. Then the swing kick round kick came back, catching Biggs on the body. Biggs will begin to loosen up, as I say, Round three or four, good left hook, right hand combination by Biggs. Wallace not hurt. Everyone talks about Wallace is always in superb condition. He stays in good shape. You can see that there's hardly any fat on his body. Very low percentage of body fat on Bill Wallace. He's a 165 pounder. He's 5'10 and a half. Biggs is 165. He stands 5'11. You see the time remaining in round one. Nice round kick in by Wallace. Biggs snapping his head back just on the end of the kick. Wallace using the jab fairly effectively. Good right hand there by Big. Good double hook by Wallace. Left hook to the body, left hook back to the head. Very, very quick. And that's that left hand that Wallace has developed through the years as round one is coming to a close. Round two, the scheduled 12 rounder in the white trousers, the defending middleweight champion, Bill Superfoot Wallace. Your Robert up. Biggs, the challenger. How about that first round, Joe? First round I gave to Wallace by a score of 10-9. He landed the more solid blows in that round. Biggs starting slow as we expected he would. Biggs with a little cut, looks like from a toenail on the right side of his head. There's a solid kick. That was the kind of kick that cut the first round. Cut just next to his nose. He has three variations off that kick, Wallace does. 
He can throw a side kick, which comes straight into the body. He can do the hook kick, which comes around behind the head, or the round kick, which comes to the front of the head. And you don't know which way it's coming. He has successfully gotten Robert Biggs to drop the right hand a little bit. Biggs is a little wary now about closing the distance, a little wary about that left hook of Bill Wallace's. And that is the key. Biggs wants to move in, doesn't he? He wants to close in. I expect after this round, he'll begin to pick up a little steam and start putting on a little more pressure. This is a 12-round fight. That's 24 minutes of karate, which is equal to 15 rounds of boxing because of the energy expended in the kicks. Joe, one thing we should mention, too. The last fight that Big was in, he got into trouble early, then came on strong to win. Started out slow. He fought Kerry Roop in Detroit. Kerry Roop came out and knocked him down with a spinning heel kick in the first round. Biggs came back and picked up steam at the end of the final round, was still going strong. One thing we should mention, you change one rule, you cannot throw a fighter like they used to let you do in PKA rules. Bill Wallace is a brown belt in judo, and he was very effective with the throws. But the rules have changed so that you cannot slam the man down on the floor. The determination was that the floor surface was a little bit hard to be slamming your opponents down. But again, they must kick eight times at the waist or above to meet that minimum kick requirement. As we come now to the end of round number two in this World Middleweight Championship bout. An excellent crowd here in Anderson, Indiana. Let's go back in round two and watch the kick of Superfoot Wallace. Wallace moves in with the round kick. You see, you see Biggs dropping that right hand. The kick lands high on his head. Good, solid snap. We might mention they have a mandatory eight count. You cannot be saved by the bell. As we come to round three, again, Wallace in the white trousers, Biggs in the black. There's that round kick again. Doubled, went to the body, back to the head with it. Look at that left leg. Amazing. He throws it like most fighters use their left arms. Both fighters have waived the three knockdown rule in this fight. It's normally in effect in PKA full contact karate matches and title bouts is normally waived by both fighters. I think a lot of people say, why does Wallace only kick with one leg? But he injured his knee when he was in the service of the right leg. Boy, good solid hook by Wallace. He injured that right leg and he started working on the left and even though he only kicks with that one leg, there's not a whole lot most people have been able to do with it. He's got Biggs really reacting to the foot. Keep you can see guys. right now he's a little tentative, isn't he? He's trying to pick his shot and not finding it. There's a good right hand in by Biggs. Wallace with a double hook inside. Wallace hates to be hit, hates to be hit. That's where Biggs may put Wallace in trouble if he nails him and can get Wallace in a dining book with him. Wallace staying cool so far. That will be Wallace. He's held this title since September 74. Good right hand in by Biggs. Back. Good. That's it. Continue. Biggs, big strength, like I say, will be good. Wallace stay inside with him and punch with him. Wallace's advantage would be to stay outside and kick. 12 rounds is a long time to stay away and kick. You can see Big start to settle in now. He's starting to feel a little more confident. One thing you must do against Wallace is overcome that sight, the whole mystique that he has. Oh boy, that, that's the, really the truth with Bill Wallace, but Biggs, I think, is beginning to do that now. You fought him, he tried to psych you out, right? He did. He stared at me as hard as anyone has ever stared at me in the middle of that ring. Oh, good right round kick. That devastating left foot of Wallace taking its effect. Let's look at it again, and then we'll look at the eye of Biggs. That left round kick came up and popped Biggs in the eye right at the bell. 60 miles an hour it's been clocked. As an end result, a slight cut is opened under the right eye of Robert Biggs. Right in the corner of his eye, he's got another small cut right under the right eye. This is round four, scheduled 12 rounder. If you've just joined us, Bill Superfoot, his final fight, he's in the white trousers. Boy, did he double up on that one beautifully. To the body, Biggs dropped the right hand, and then the round kick came up and popped him in the head. Wallace is in much, oh, good, another double kicked in by Wallace. Biggs almost ducked into the shin. It has been his big weakness in the last two fights against Kerry Roop and against Steve Mackey. He ducked into the shin, ducked to the right. Bill Superfoot Wallace, his retirement fight. Up. 
trying to successfully bow out undefeated as a world middleweight champion. And I think he looks superb. He's very quick today. We've seen him on other fights. He started very well. Let's see, he uh, had a bump there. A little headbutt, I believe. Both men apologizing to the other for banging their heads together. Accident. Biggs not closing the distance as early as I thought he would have. There he goes. Biggs could get in trouble if he gets in and drops that right hand and catches that hook because Wallace does throw it with extreme power. Boy, he wanted to show. Wallace did right away. He was in control, didn't he? After he took that shot, he came right back with a flurry. Wallace does not like to get hit. When he gets hit, he does come right back from it, wants to get it back in a hurry. That's sometimes a problem. Biggs is very good with the uppercuts. In close, you saw Biggs work a couple uppercuts. He's very likely to do that every time they get in tight. Inside 30 seconds now of round four. Wallace, of course, he's fought these longer rounds. How about Biggs? How many 12 rounders has he got? The longest fight Robert Biggs has gone is eight rounds. Bill Wallace fought nine rounds in his last title defense. Since then, the rounds have been increased to 12. They're ready now for round five of this World Middleweight Championship. Bill Superfoot Wallace in the white trousers. Robert Biggs, the challenger, in the black trousers. And you were saying, Joe, that Wallace really dictating this fight right now. That's right. As, as you were saying that, he popped Biggs again with that round kick. The reason he's been able to do that is Biggs has been staying out and let Wallace fight his pace and let Wallace fight his distance. A few times he's come in close and he's got Wallace to punch with him. But by and large, Biggs has been giving a lot of respect to that left foot, as he certainly should. It amazes me how long he leaves that leg up there as in contrast to other full contact karate fighters. And he can just pop it. And while you're re reacting to the first fake, he'll come and snap his leg into your face again, his foot into your face again. Biggs, as I say, when he gets in close, will want to work that uppercut. As he had Wallace against the ropes, he started in with the uppercut. Wallace very smartly getting out, fighting at a distance again. Wallace, who is a native Indiana, a Hoosier, now at Memphis State, living in Memphis, Tennessee, he has written a textbook on the sports aspects of karate. So he is a student of this game as well as an outstanding fighter. As long as I have, he's irritated. He'll want to get that back in a hurry. That is the first bright spot in this fight for Biggs was that last flurry. Other than that, it's been Wallace. How do you score it going into this round? I have Wallace leading the fight 40-37. It's unofficial, but it seems to me like Biggs is beginning to get Wallace in a little closer to him now. Wallace wanted to hit him with that hook, which he did then. Solid. That's the most improved aspect of Wallace is the punching ability. Almost got break, a little trouble there. Wallace back, cocking you, that left Continue. hook, dropping it. We're ready now for round six Second in down. this World Middleweight Championship bout. Biggs, as you mentioned, is the type of fighter who gets stronger. Is he doing that in this fight? He has not picked up the pace the way I thought he would yet. I'll tell you what, maybe one of his problems is that right eye. I imagine he's he's been seeing a couple or three things out of that right eye ever since the toe went in it earlier in the fight. That was a nice hook kick by Wallace, landing with the heel behind break, break, Biggs' back, ear. Back, back, Biggs ready? right behind Continue. it with the counters. You can hear referee Jay Will separating them, but it's been a very clean fight. They've been moving very well. Look at that left leg. He just defies you to pick it up, and then he'll come at you to a different direction. Nice right hand to the body, Biggs. Left hook counter, Wallace. Wallace will retire after this fight. He had a lot of opportunities to do other things. He's already starred in full start in one movie and has another one coming out. He'll be starting another movie in the fall. I think he'll be starring either as himself or someone who's supposed to be him. Good right hand in by Biggs in close. Wallace very wisely moving out, keeping the distance. Biggs is starting to move him into the corners now. A good uppercut inside then by Biggs. Good right hand by Biggs. Another uppercut. Wallace said, I want to retire undefeated, and he has a real challenge as we're in the sixth round of the scheduled 12-rounder. You can see Biggs now starting to assert himself. 
I do believe that right eye has been giving him a little problem. Good World job, Middleweight guys. Championship here. PKA, full contact karate, and there's the time left here in the sixth round. Good solid right hand in by Biggs. Wallace dropping back with that left hand down. Biggs catching him with the right. Now Wallace throws that hard hook, but he can get himself in trouble by dropping it down to Kike. But a good right out. hand up, will certainly beat the hook because it's straight. And we approach the halfway mark of the schedule 12 rounder. A uh, look at the two fighters, Bill Superfoot Wallace, Robert Biggs, as we come to round number seven in this world middleweight championship. Jay Will from Columbus, Ohio, the referee in charge. And how do you score it thus far, Joe Corley? I've got Wallace leading 59-57. I gave the last round to Biggs. Biggs starting to land a few harder shots now, closing to this a good round kick by Wallace. Biggs closing the distance, beginning to put Wallace in the corner more. Wallace has thrown 78 kicks at the end of the sixth round. Biggs has thrown 70 kicks. There's that left hand again of Wallace. While Wallace is throwing the left hand, he tends to drop the right hand. If Biggs lands the hook while Wallace is missing. Oh, good. Round kicked in by Wallace. Snapping left leg round kick. Don't push. If Wallace drops that left hand too far. Biggs could nail him with the right hand. If Wallace drops that right hand too far, Biggs could nail him with the left hook. Biggs will go in and throw right hand shots to the body occasionally, trying to set up his left hook to the head. Good coverage then by Biggs, picking off that left hook with his right arm. Okay, this Biggs is trained under a good one. He's under the direction of Fred Wren, a former world-ranked middleweight contender. Well, he's had good tutelage. Trying to put it to good use now against the guy who's as cagey as anybody. Look at that one. That was a double left hook to the head with Biggs dropping that right hand, starting to throw it. Well, that was a rare right hand by Wallace. Wallace doesn't throw a lot of right hands. Looked like he caused a little mouse under Biggs' left eye with a hard right hand in by Biggs inside. Wallace back against the rope, caught the right hand solid. And there's the time remaining in round seven. Wallace have been traveling a lot. Some people wondered about it. Look at that right hand that time. Another solid right hand. Same move. Biggs is sneaking the right hand in tight and close. Wallace working himself out of trouble there very smoothly. It's hard to say. Wallace has traveled a lot. They wondered if it would hurt his stamina, but he's in such good shape all the time as round seven is coming to a close. Let's look at this again. Watch this right hand now by Biggs. Biggs in tight, that right hand lands right across the jaw. Round eight has Superfoot Wallace, Robert Biggs in this World Middleweight Championship bout. How do you score it right now? I've got Bill Wallace leading 68-67. I gave Biggs the last round again, 10-9. He's began to pick up the pace. Wallace's stamina still seems to be holding up though. Biggs is catching him more. Biggs is loosening up. So you have only one point separating the two of them right now. That's correct. I have Wallace with 88 kicks, Biggs with 79 through seven rounds. Look at that spin. Wallace with a spinning back kick. I think it's the only one he's ever thrown in a title defense. Well, that's interested in Biggs' reaction there. He smiled. He thought that was cute. Right hand to the body by Biggs. Wallace with a beautiful left leg counter. Remember now, they have to meet that requirement of eight kicks per round. Wallace works himself off the ropes beautifully with the hooks. He hasn't been able to really do much with him on the ropes, has he? Biggs gets him there and he fights his way out every time. Wallace lets him take a punch or two, then fights his way out. Oh, good, beautiful double kicked in Wallace to the body, to the head, just like a boxer would throw a hook. Biggs holding that right hand up now, picking shots right to the body, left, right, inside. When the fighter starts throwing that right hand to the body, you can look for a hook behind it to the head. Keep your head up. We're in round eight, scheduled 12 rounder. Now he's got him in the ropes, but again, Wallace escapes. Biggs throws some fairly short, stiff punches inside. They don't seem to have any one of them a real knockout power to them, but the combination of them are the things that could hurt Wallace. Really, Biggs hasn't been all that effective kicking, has he? It's been mostly the punches. No, he hasn't. It's very difficult to be effective with your kicks against Wallace. 
Why is that? His reflexes are just unbelievably good. That was a good right hand by Biggs. Wallace a little irritated. You see him come back out with multiple punches. Crowd loving that flurry. And round eight is coming to a close. That's Sunday, the 15th, Shark Tagging, part one, as that will be an outstanding event. And then we'll have Dokes Ocasio going against each other in two weeks on the sports back. Look at that spinning kick by Bill Wallace. A rare right yeah. leg kick by the Superfoot. Superfoot because he only kicks with the left leg. Saturday and Sunday. Next week, Shark Tagging, part one. I had the opportunity to do that the first time. It is exciting. And you can see Biggs with that lethal right hand. Really vicious right hand. The look on Wallace's face is vicious than as he unloaded. I mean, that's the most powerful right hand I think I've seen Wallace throw. Biggs really reacting, going under that left hook kick. That's not a bad combination by Biggs in there. That left right to the head. Ready? Continue. He continues to want to get him in the ropes. Thus far, Wallace has been elusive when he gets in there. Wallace has kept him intimidated with the left hook. Biggs has not closed in as often as I thought he might have. This fight coming to you live from Anderson, Indiana for the World Middleweight Championship. Full contact karate. Bill Wallace, the superstar in this event, trying to finish unbeaten, undefeated as he retires after this fight. Robert Biggs is going to have to really pick up the pace, put an extreme amount of pressure on him for the rest of it to take it. Is that right hand again. Starting to unload more power in the right hand and still letting Wallace work himself out of the corner. He's not keeping Wallace in the corner and working him over. You see there, Wallace is backs against the rope. Wallace begins throwing his counter punches. Biggs just kind of spins, lets Wallace out of trouble. Good solid right then by Biggs. Couldn't see where it landed. Biggs 15 and one in his career. Wallace has never lost to fight. Big starting to get Wallace a little more than Donnie put that right hand stuck right between Wallace's hands and Big came with a good uppercut behind. You can see why they say Big is very workmanlike. He's just working. He's just slugging it out, improving as each round goes by. As you see, we approach round 10, and Joe Corley, I think this fight's going how you figured. As it goes on, Biggs is getting stronger. That's right. He's not picked up the pace as fast as I thought he would. All right, let's go now to round 10. This is a scheduled 12 rounder. Again. How would you score it thus far? I've got Wallace leading 87 86 by one point. That's Close. been the spread most of the fight, hasn't it? About a one point difference between these two. Wallace has thrown 106 kicks in nine rounds. Biggs has thrown 99. And I might add, Wallace much more effective with his kicks. He has popped Biggs' head a number of times with the round kick. Biggs' effectiveness has been inside with the left-right combinations and the uppercuts as he's had Wallace against the ropes. Both fighters look strong, don't they? Both fighters have tremendous punching power. I would say Wallace is superior in that category. By virtue, you can see the development in his upper body. Lats, shoulders, biceps, triceps, very powerfully built. And you said when he started, he was not all that well developed. He's really worked at it. He doesn't do a lot of weight training, but his, his karate training has included hitting the heavy bag, just like the boxers do, the speed bags, and all the things that boxers do in addition to his kicks. And with that has come a tremendous upper body development. Wallace, the world champion in this middleweight division, in the white trousers, big. The black, pretty good blow there by Wallace. Good jab then by Wallace. Beat the hook. Looked like he might have Biggs in a little trouble. Good solid right hand then by Wallace. Boy, did you see the poise of Biggs. He tried to shake it off. What a solid right hand then by Biggs. He unloaded that one. Wallace may be a little hurt. I can't see from here. That's the kind of Donnie right, right, right. Look at that. A late punch. And I'm sure that Biggs did like that. Warning, Jay okay. Will yeah, now right. will warn him. Are There'll be no okay? penalty. Sure, but it uh, uh, did not make okay. Wallace very happy. Sure? No, Wallace okay, smiled. He said, no problem. The referee making sure that he's okay, that he's not suffering as a result of that blow. They exchanged jabs then. Round 10 coming to a close. 
With two rounds to go, Joe Corley, what do we see here? Got the scorecard there. Again, I can't make out the numbers on that. I would tend to think that I would tend to think that judges may have Wallace winning the fight. I've got it 96-96. The 11th round, two to go, and Biggs is coming after it. Robert Biggs getting more and more aggressive, but just exactly as he had been expected to do. Bill Wallace is the world champion. There's no written rule which says you have to go out and demol demolish the world champion in order to take the title away. But there's that unwritten thing, that, that stigma that goes with a world title. If you want to take that title away, and especially if you want to take it away from somebody like Superfoot, you better come out and be great. And you better do it convincingly. Biggs has been convincing. He has as yet been great. There have been moments when that right hand of Biggs has Gotten Wallace in trouble, but Wallace with a great poise that he has. Two very poised fighters is what we're talking about. Wallace with a tremendous amount of stamina to have been doing the traveling that he's been. He's been in England, he's been in Vancouver, and he's been everywhere in between in the last six weeks, doing seminars, doing training sessions. Biggs trying to get him into the ropes. There's a good right hand again. Good solid right by Biggs. Wallace through the right. Biggs countered with a right. Wallace got himself away from the ropes. That next to the last round of the scheduled 12-rounder in the issue, very much up for grabs. Break, break, step back, Wallace would that. like to finish unbeaten. And Biggs would like to wrestle that crown away from him, and he is getting an excellent effort. Biggs trying to concentrate on the left hook now. He sees Wallace dropping the right hand. Good solid right hand in by Wallace. Biggs sees Wallace dropping the right hand. He's trying to land the hook. Right now, Biggs is just really relentlessly coming after it. Oh boy, he caught Wallace bouncing off the ropes with a short right. Wallace spinning himself out, now taking the aggressive roll. And we're going to have one round to go in the schedule 12 rounder. Let's look back at round 11, the left foot of Bill Wallace, but watch Biggs. Biggs comes behind that with a good right hand, catches Wallace on the right side. All right, the final two minutes, round 12. For all the marbles, there's Wattis. The big hug, and he'd like to wrap it up here and remain unbeaten in his career. This is the last time we're going to see Superfoot Wattis. Robert Biggs better be get real serious for these last two minutes, or I think his challenge is likely going to go by the boards. And so Wallace, his last round ever, he'd like to finish out an impressive style, the little grin vine, but he's got to just win this fight. He's got to be worried about right now finishing strongly as Biggs is in striking distance. Wallace, a tremendous athlete. The last two minutes of his career, I imagine he won't let down. Slightly staggered Biggs with that left hook. Biggs a little off balance when it landed. There's Biggs using the kicks a little more. He's been more effective with them. They're immediately above us in this last round. Good left. Right left by Wallace on the ropes. Good combination. Once again, Biggs letting him out. Wallace counting with a hard left hook. Good right hand by Biggs. Wallace, I don't think, is in trouble. He should, should try to fight his way off the ropes the way he did before. Now Biggs coming back at him. Tremendously conditioned athlete. Good combination, Biggs, left, right, in the rope. This crowd, excellent crowd enjoying this. The final round of Bill Wallace's career. You see the time remaining. That's the kind of Donnie book, book that Biggs would have had, or should have had, I should say, Wallace in the whole fight to take it. Wallace has been smart. He stayed away. Biggs has let him dominate the distance, let him dominate the techniques. Biggs trying to set him up on the ropes, but he doesn't have any time left. And Wallace with a flurry at the bell. We'll be back with a decision in just a moment. Uh, we're ready now for the announcement of the decision in this World Middleweight Championship bout. Okay, here we go. They're going to go with the Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have a decision momentarily. 
Well, we're waiting now while the judges compile their scores. As we said throughout the fight, it was about one point difference separating the two of them at the very end. And Bill Superfoot Wallace, has he been named as the champion? He has been. Wallace, Bill. Well, you did it, partner. Always oh, hot out here. <laughs> hey, no wonder you're champion all the time, buddy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, anything surprise you? That son of a gun hits awful damn hard. You really were effective with your left leg again. That seemed to keep him, he kept relentlessly coming after you, but you kept him away. Well, that's my bread and butter, and if I'm going to go out big, I'm going to go out with that. What about uh, this fight? Any, uh, any particular point you think it turned around for you? Well, I thought I started off pretty good. You know, uh, I was just going to go out there and for 12 rounds kick. You know, if he got close, I was going to try to punch him back and kick him. And uh, he's easy to hit in the head with a kick, but he hits awful damn hard. But uh, I'm glad I'm getting old and these guys are taking over now. I think everybody should be as old. Uh, Bill, this is it, though. Yes, this is this your is retirement. It. I've this heard this before it. now. This is no, it. I had my dinner last night and it was chicken. If it would have been hamburgers, I would have thought about it. <laughs> but it was chicken, so I'm not thinking about it. But how does this, uh, what does this fit into your future plans now? What are you going to do from here on? Well, I'm still going to go around doing seminars and do exhibitions and exhibition fights and things. Because, uh, number one, I'm a karate man. I'll always be a karate man. If I do a movie, fine. But uh, I love the art, and it's, it's basically me. I want to tell you something. This game has loved you. You've really been a credit to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bill Superfoot Wallace, who once again has held on very successfully to the World Middleweight Championship. Retiring undefeated. For Joe Corley, this is Gary Bender saying so long from Anderson, Indiana, and now back to Dick Stockton.